Hello, family and friends and loved ones. I'm here again with you um, to have a comprehensive um, study that is going to be something to help you in your preparation towards your BEC exams. And to, um, those of the people that will be having their preparation towards the next coming exam in the following years. Uh, my name is Ishmael Nyami, and um, this study is going to be on the human digestive system. Okay, and um, what we have here are some outlines of what we are going to take a look at on this structure that we have over here. Now, um, if you are a new person here with me, then I will urge you to subscribe so that if there is a new video, you will receive a notification that is going to alert you to join and have a look at the new video so you don't miss it or the video missing you. Um, on our study, we are going to take a look at how to identify the digestive system in human and its various parts, okay? Then the next one is um, to state the functions of the um, part of the system, okay? And also to give the site for the stats or occurrence of the following that we have over here, okay? So the first one we have here is digestion of protein, okay? So meaning the site for the start of digestion of protein. The next one we have there is absorption of end product of digestion, okay? Yeah, then the last one, the last bad one, of course, is the reabsorption of water. And the very, very last one is ejection, okay? So we'll be looking at the sites where the start or the occurrence of this um, um, processes take place or okay. All right, so starting with the first objective. Starting with the first objective. Looking at the structure we have here, there is a typical digestive system in human. Okay, we also have digestive system in other animals as well, like the fowl, okay, and um, the, the rabbits, among others, okay. But this one here is that of digestive system in humans, okay. Um, this system is what most of um, some students, okay, identify as the digestive organ. This whole thing here isn't just a single organ, okay? What we have here is a system, and a system actually is defined as group of organs with the same um, structure, okay, that performs the same function or a common function. That is what a system is. So what we have here is a system because we have groups of organs, okay, that are um, quite similar in structure with a common function. A common function of digestion, meaning they are all aiming at breaking down complex food substances into simple food substances that the body can absorb and assimilate or use. Okay, so there is a typical digestive system, system in human, not digestive organ. So please, if you are a victim of um, those students that identify this as an organ, today sh um, should mark the end of such an error. And I believe it is going to be um, something you'll be taking serious. So if you see this, you identify this as the digestive system. The next one says that state the functions of some parts of the system. That means that we should be identifying the parts we have it. Then we go ahead and state the functions of the various parts of this system, digestive system. So from what we have here, we can see this whole part here is the mouth or what we shall call the buccal cavity, okay? So we have this to be the outlet of a tube that we are going to identify later, okay? A tube that we are going to identify later okay now this is the part that we actually have in the book of cavity or the mouth that is also within the mouth that is i can have made um some brackets here identified as the mouth okay so all of this part is within the mouth okay then this section within the truth okay so this section within the truth then this section within the mouth all right now this part identified or um, labeled as I here is a gland, okay? Now, this gland that we have here is what we also do have over here, okay? The same gland we do have here as well, okay? Now, a gland is actually an organ, okay? Most of the time, small in size, all right? 
and um, it is actually called a gland because it is that organ that contains a fluid and also tends to secrete the fluid occasionally okay so any organ that produces or contains fluid that secretes or releases the fluid occasionally becomes a gland okay and most of the times the kind of fluid that it contains and secretes is attributed to it um, as its name okay so the gland that we have here is called or termed as the salivary gland the salivary gland okay and like what I have said initially the fluid that they produce or contain okay is attributed to them as their name so if I am identifying I and these structures here as salivary gland that means that there is the gland that contains the saliva okay so the saliva is produced in the salivary gland or the salivary glands okay all right now this part here that you are seeing is actually located um somewhere here uh, in front of your ear okay so somewhere here that is where we have this thing close your ear in front of your ear so this side and this side too that is where we have this so we have salivary gland somewhere here too then in our vocal cavity we have salivary gland there as well okay so the saliva we have in our mouth is produced by the salivary gland okay then the next one we have here that is ii the ii is what we call um the track here okay most referred to um windpipe by many people okay so that is the windpipe or the track here now it's referred to as the windpipe of course because we have the 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 air that we have inhaled flowing through it into the air sac of our lungs okay so the air that we inhaled into our lungs or into our air sac firstly go through our nose through then our pharynx and larynx into our windpipe or the trachea okay so i i is the trachea or the wind pipe the trachea or the wind pipe then also um we have i i i i i i is that tube that connects the buccal cavity to this very organ that we have over here okay and that is what we identify as the esophagus or the gallus so that is a narrow long tube that connects the mouth to the organ that we have here we are going i'm not mentioning the name because we are going to take a look at it after we are done with what we have immediate okay to identify so that is the esophagus or the gallet okay then the eye vein the eye vein you can see is um a tube that appears after the trachea that is eye vein coming after trachea it appears in two so two branches so it's like we have the trachea divided into two branches now these branches are what we call the bronchi okay so that is the bronchi okay so that means that after the air has gone out of the trachea it enters or it goes through the bronchi now if it is just one of these two branches identified then we name it as bronchus okay i mean if you have just one so if you have just this just this branch just this one alone okay just this one alone identified then you name that as um bronchus if it is just this one you name that as bronchus but if both are identified or labeled like what i did initially i mean this then you identify that as bronchi bronchi okay bronchi that is the the part that lays the air into the bronchioles okay we shall talk about that then we come to vein vein is the um the stomach okay that is the stomach vein is the stomach i believe as you are listening you are putting things down you are putting information down then vein i is um identified as liver then vein i i as the um the gall bladder okay then um vein i i i as the pancreas or what we can call term or refer to as pancreas okay so that is vein i i then i x i x um is identified as the the duodenum the duodenum that is i x okay then x is identified as small intestine now you may be having a question like um 
that of ix and x appears to be the same. So how come we are referring to ix as dear denum and that of x as small intestine? That is, that is um, a reasonable question. The fact here is that the, the immediate um, part of the small intestine, I mean, the immediate part of this narrow tube here, okay, is that part that we call the duodenum, okay? In other words, the part of this small tube that is surrounded by the gallbladder and this pancreas or this pancreas is that part that we call the duodenum, all right? So when you go beyond this part, then you enter or you get to um, be in the small intestine or what we call the ileum, right? Then after IX identified as ileum, we get to X, sorry, after X identified as ileum, we get to what? We get to XI. Now, XI is bigger than that of the small tube that we are seeing over here, okay? It's like this, a small um, intestine. Then this one should be called a large intestine okay so this is a small intestine and this is a large intestine okay and the immediate part of the small intestine that we have the pancreas and the gallbladder is what we tend as the um the duodenum okay then xii xii is identified as um appendix okay so that is the appendix that is the appendix, okay, the appendix. Then XIII, that is the rectum, the rectum. Then XIV is the anus, okay? So we have this part as salivary gland, trachea or windpipe, the oesophagus or the gullet, the bronchi, with the manner in which it has been identified, the bronchi, okay? Then the liver, then the stomach, the gallbladder, the pancreas, the duodenum, the small intestine, the large intestine, the appendix, the rectum, and the last one as what? As the anus. Okay, so that is how you identify the part of this. You are always going to meet the human digestive system in this manner. So there is nothing like you having anything new and different from what you are seeing here. The only slight thing is that sometimes you see this system without this part, okay? So when you see this system without this part, you shouldn't identify this tube here as trachea, no. Remember that the tube here is what you call the trachea, and it's always appearing close to the oesophagus, okay? Something quite little or smaller, okay, than the oesophagus or the gullet. So make sure you don't mistake in one for the other. Make sure you don't mistake in the trachea for oesophagus or oesophagus for trachea. Please take note of that. Now, for the sake of you having the correct spelling of these parts, I want to put the names down so you get to know how best we should be spelling them. And of course, if you should be having the spellings wrong, then you are going to lose marks. Though it's correct in pronunciation, I mean, um, in a considerable manner, it's, it's correct. But for your, for your spelling being wrong, it becomes wrong as well. So what I have there is I, so I as um, salivary gland. So salivary gland, then I I as trachea, then I I I as gallet or oesophagus, then I V as bronchi, then V V as stomach, then V I as liver, then VII as gallbladder, then VIII as the pancreas or the pancreas, if you should put it that way. Then, then the next one as um, IX. We have IX over here. So IX, IX as 
duodenum. The duodenum, then X, of course, comes next. Then X has small intestine. So small intestine, small intestine. Then XI, XI as the large intestine. The large intestine. Then XII, XII as appendix. Then XIII as rectum. Then the last part, XIV as the anus or anus. So this is, or these are the various parts of the human digestive system, the human digestive system. So quickly, to so the second objective, we are to state the functions of these parts, okay? Now, in the mouth, in the mouth, in the mouth we have the salivary gland, okay? Now, the saliva contains an enzyme, okay, that converts um, carbohydrates, okay, like starch, into a simple or a simpler carbohydrate called maltose. Okay, now that enzyme is called salivary amylase. Okay, so in the saliva within the mouth, we have an enzyme called salivary amylase, and it converts starch into maltose. In the same mouth, we have the teeth. Okay, that breaks down food into smaller particles. Then the same mouth, we have saliva that softens food. The same mouth, we have the tongue that rolls food, okay, into um, bolus, making the food easier to swallow. Okay, then we get to um, II. II is the trachea, okay, so transport air, inhaled what? Air, okay, inhaled air into the what? Into the lungs, okay. Then um, III is um, the esophagus or the gullet, okay, that transport food from the mouth into the stomach through peristalsis, through peristalsis, okay, so that is for um, I, I, I. Then I vein, the I vein as bronchi transports the air that is being inhaled or the inhaled air from the trachea into the bronchioles, then into the alveoli in the lungs. Okay, so that is the function of um, I vein. Then vein, vein as the stomach, that is the part that we have the production of the proteases. Proteases is a term that refers to enzymes that digest protein. So hence, proteases, okay? Yeah, and these enzymes are pepsin and renin. And in the stomach, the pepsin and the renin um, digest protein into peptides, okay? Protein into peptides, all right? Then um, also in the same stomach, we have production of hydrochloric acid, okay? Acid produced by an animal, so it becomes organic acid, okay? And there is the acid that destroys any pathogen in the food, if there is or there are. Then also we have um, VI as the liver. That is the part that stores a lot of blood. Then also in terms of digestion, it produces um, a liquid that we call bile, okay? This bile is an alkaline liquid, all right? And the purpose of this bile is to break down fat into smaller droplets, okay? And the breakdown is sometimes termed as emulsification, emulsification. So in other words, you could say the bile emulsifies fat into smaller units or droplets, all right? So that is the purpose of VI, sorry, uh, of course, vein I. Then we come to vein I I. Now, after vein I has produced the bile, the bile is stored in vein I I. So it's like vein I produces the bile, vein I as liver produces the bile, then vein I I as gallbladder uh, stores, uh, it stores, it keeps, it keeps or stores the what? The bile. So the bile is not produced by the gallbladder, no. It is rather produced by the liver, but stored in the gallbladder, okay? Yeah, so it is released out of the gallbladder onto the food to emulsify the fat into um, simpler units or 
droplet. Then the next one we have is VIII. That is the pancreas or the pancreas. Okay. Now the pancreas or the pancreas is the part that produces uh, another liquid. Okay. Another liquid that contains three enzymes. Uh, contains three enzymes. Okay. And these enzymes digest some various food substances. Okay. Um, so I'll skip that and talk about it in IX. IX is duodenum. Okay. The reason I'm skipping is that the function will be um, affected. Okay. Will be affected in IX. So I'll talk about it in IX. So now we are in IX. IX is duodenum. Okay. Now the liquid produced by the pancreas uh, is a juice known as pancreatic juice pancreatic juice and this pancreatic juice contains an enzyme now the enzymes that we have in there like i said initially digest three different um forms of um food substances okay one form is um a carbohydrate okay a carbohydrate known as starch okay so it is not only within the mouth that starch is digested also within the duodenum starch is also what digested don't forget that in the stomach, I didn't speak of digestion of starch. I spoke of digestion of what? Protein. Okay. Now, in the duodenum, the enzyme responsible for the breakdown, for the digestion of the starch is the what? The pancreatic amylase. Pancreatic amylase. So, in the pancreatic juice from the pancreas, we have an amylase. So, an amylase in the what? In the juice. The amylase in the pancreatic juice. So it will be called or referred to as pancreatic amylase. And because it is an amylase, it breaks down starch. Amylase are responsible for the breakdown of starch, just as proteases are responsible for the breakdown of protein. And aside the pancreatic amylase, we also have some other enzymes, okay, like trypsin, okay, trypsin. The trypsin digests protein. Okay, so that means that it isn't only within the stomach that protein is being digested. Within the duodenum, protein is also what? Digested. Undigested proteins are digested by the what? By the trypsin. By the trypsin. Meaning that the trypsin is also um, a protease. Just as the pepsin and the renin are proteases. Okay, then the, 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 next, um, the next enzyme, okay, is the the lipids okay the lipids the lipids digest lipids the lipids digest lipids lipids is a term referring to fat okay so lipids break down lipids okay lipids into fatty acid and what glycerol then the trypsin digests the protein into peptide okay just as in the stomach the protein was digested into peptide. So in the stomach, it was digested into peptide by pepsin and renin. Then in the duodenum, it's also digested into what? Peptide. But this time, by the trypsin, not by pepsin and renin. So please take note of that. So in summary, within this section, the pancreatic um, juice is from the pancreas. The pancreatic juice contains pancreatic... Um, um, amylase, okay, and also contain trypsin, and also contain lipids. Pancreatic amylase digests undigested starch into what? Into um, maltose, okay? Then lipids digest lipids. Lipids digest lipids into what? Fatty acid and glycerol. Then trypsin digests protein into what? Into peptides. Okay, so that is that in the duodenum. Then we come to the small intestine. In the small intestine, we have the absorption of food substances. Okay, simple food substances. Okay, in the small intestine. So in the small intestine, you are going to have all the complex food substances now in their simplest form. Okay, so a complex food substance like starch will now become glucose. A complex food substance like protein will now become amino acid. A complex food substance like oil and fat, a complex food substance like oil and fat will now become fatty acid and glycerol. 
Okay, so fat and oil are now fatty acid and glycerol in the small intestine. Starch, okay, and other complex carbohydrates are now what? Glucose in the small intestine. Then also, um, vitamins and mineral salt, they are already in their simplest form. So they don't undergo any digestion. So vitamins and mineral salts are not digested. They remain vitamins and mineral salts from the mouth to the small intestine. Then the last one, protein are digested into what? Into um, amino acid, okay? Into amino acid. So these are what happens in the small intestine. And just as we have the juice produced in the stomach, we also have juice produced in the small intestine. And that juice is known as what? The intestinal juice, or what we term as the sarcos entericus. So the sarcos entericus contains what? The erypsin. So it is the erypsin that converts the peptide from the duodenum into amino acid. Okay, then maltase will convert maltose from the duodenum into what? Glucose. Okay, so please take note of that. Then if it goes um, out of the small intestine, okay, into the bloodstream, I mean the glucose, uh, the amino acid, the vitamins, the mineral salts, okay, and other simple substances, simple food substances enters the bloodstream from the small intestine for assimilation or for them to be used. Then the, the remaining undigested food particles enters the large intestine, okay? In the large intestine, there is reabsorption of what? Of water in the large intestine. Then after that reabsorption, the, the remaining or the undigested food materials goes on into the rectum where they are stored temporarily and of course shortly released through the anus okay so the release of the undigested food material through the anus is what we term ejection ejection uh, ejection that is the release of the undigested food materials uh, from the body through the anus so these are the various functions of the various parts that we do have here now i believe we have been able to satisfy or exhaust all of our um, objectives here we have been able to identify this as the human digestive system so satisfying the first objective second one functions we have gone through all that in brief then um sites for the start or occurrence of the following so the first one is digestion of protein where it starts from it starts from what the stomach okay so digestion of protein start or begin or commence from what from the stomach so take note of that there is no digestion of um protein okay in the mouth there is nothing like that and the reason is that there is no enzyme responsible for the breakdown of protein in the mouth in other words um there is nothing like a protease within the mouth okay so take note of that the next one is absorption of end products of digestion where there is absorption of end products of digestion where there is absorption of glucose where there is absorption of amino acid where there is absorption of vitamins and mineral salts okay and that is nowhere but the small intestine the small intestine so absorption of end products of digestion occurs in the small intestine the reabsorption of water occurs in the large intestine okay so we have water among the undigested food particles or materials okay and within this undigested food particles or materials there is reabsorption of what of water okay that's like a certain people that's like a certain people suffer halitosis because they have water absorbed from the um the undigested food materials into their blood okay and that results in some um bad smell in their mouth that is halitosis okay then the last part ejection that is what i said um uh, referred to as the removal of undigested food materials okay from the body i believe you will be able to um do some little bits of reverse of the video just in case you um, couldn't grab something as quick as you should be grabbing them so as to um, be able to fully uh, comprehend what i have given you if you have enjoyed the lesson 
and um, you like it, do demonstrate that by hitting the thumbs up button over there, okay, to be able to like it, then also um, share it among your friends so that they can also have what you have received. Then the last thing, you hit on the subscription button to subscribe so that you can receive all notifications for all new release videos, okay, whenever they are firstly dropped so you don't miss them or they missing you. My name still remains Ishmael Nyami, and thank you so much for having me and um, being with me. Bye-bye.